We got to talk. We have Sean Porter here. So, Sean, we have to ask you and talk to you about <laughs> the situation between you and Tank Davis and that back and forth you guys had on Twitter. And let's read Tank Davis and what he said first. He said, now ask Sean this question. If I beat his ass in the gym and he was over 147, why the bleep would I be scared to fight an MF with just a nose? Shit not adding up. I don't know why I cussed at the S word and not the S, but whatever. And uh, <laughs> Sean, <laughs> Sean, let's get your, what's your take? I know on your podcast with Bill Haney, you mentioned that maybe Tank doesn't want to fight Devin Haney. Yeah. Yeah. So let's get your take on the situation. What's your, your take with this whole situation with you and Davis? I mean, you know, his thing is he he brings me into it, and I get it because I was the one who conducted the podcast with Bill Haney, and he says he beat my my ASS even though I fight at 147 pounds. I'm not one to defend myself, you know. So I'm just like, you know, hey, I was going through my own shit, and and those around knew exactly what I meant by that. If you don't know, and you ain't supposed to know, you know. But the other side of that, you've already said that you when you fought Mario Barrios, you said I'm not going back up to 140. Boom, done deal. If you make the fight happen, you're going to make it happen at a catch weight because you're not going back up to 140. There's that, those are two different beasts. And we saw it in against Regis Progre. We 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 knew but we, then we didn't know. But when we saw Devin Haney against Regis Progre, we know that yo this kid is a different beast at 140 and there's a difference between Mario Barrios at 140 and Tank Davis at 140. Why does this kept I don't think neither one of them want to fight right now. Not that point blank, I don't think neither one of them want to fight right now. Uh, Tank don't want the fight at 140, and I don't think that De- I don't think Devin and his dad truly want that fight right now. I think for for Devin and his family, and or for Devin and his dad, especially Bill. Let me exclude let me exclude Devin because at the end of the day, the dads always get the sons into the shit, and then we gotta fight our way out of it. You know what I mean? So let me just say that. But I think I think Bill has has other plans. I think at the moment is is smoking mirrors from Bill. I think Bill knows exactly what what he wants to do at this point in time. And I think at this point in time, it truly is not Tank Davis. It truly is not Tiafima Lopez. I think it could be Ryan Garcia, but let's let's keep it real. Ryan, of those couple of guys that's hot right now between 135 and 140, he's the weakest link of, of those guys. You know what I mean? But I don't think we ain't going to see uh, Devin in the ring with with Tail, with Tail uh, Lopez or Tank Davis anytime soon, or, or Tank. I don't know what his true name is right now. I don't want to disrespect him, but we won't see them in the in the ring anytime soon. It doesn't take me saying, Tank, you don't you don't want to fight Devin for that fight to not happen. The fight just ain't gonna happen. The business ain't there for that fight right now. And I don't think either of the fighters want that fight right now. That... It, one more thing, not the fighters, the 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 business of the fighters. Right. I don't think I, I don't and, think the business of the fighters want that fight right and now. And I'll say this I, I was at I was in Wildcard Gym around 2011, 2010, 2012. And 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 I saw Sean sparring in the gym at that time. Later on, Sean became world champion and fought me and, and beat several other very good fighters. Sean was the kind of fighter when you spar him is one beast, and when you fight him is another beast. Fighting Sean Porter is not sparring Sean Porter. I mean, it is, but at the same time, it's not. Right. Yeah. Hey, Sean, can you set up what? When did you spar with Tank? Because I think people might not be clear. But we're t- Tank was talking about when you guys sparred. When sure. did you guys spar? And was he that good in the gym? I, I mean, and again, I'm like, like I'm looking at him like Tank. You you remember getting in the ring with guys that are smaller than you, guys that are younger than you, guys that you may be rooting for and and hoping that they do them best, their best. I spar with Tank. I think the week before I fought Terrence Crawford, and mm. and no excuses, but like I said, hey, yo, I was going through my own shit, and and you had to be there to understand what I mean mm-hmm. by that. If you weren't there, hey, it is what it is. Things that happen in camp stays in camp, you know. But at the same time, when we got when I got in the ring with the kid, I'm like, yo, I want to see what this kid got. I want to see who who he is, you know. And he's firing on all cylinders, you know what I mean? I saw exactly what I what I thought I would see. Uh, a, a tremendous boxer who can punch, who loves the game, who ain't afraid to get hit, who ain't afraid to get gritty, and the list goes on. But there's a difference between fighting somebody, uh, Mario Barrios, at 140, who's limited in talent, limited in, uh, in, uh, in a few other things, and then fighting somebody like Devin Haney, who who truly isn't limited, you know? And I don't think he... If you already said you ain't going back to 140 after fighting somebody like Mario Barrios... Why the hell would we think you're going to go back to 140 to fight somebody like Devin Haney? It ain't happening. Sorry, I told the truth. So, Sean, you want, you want Italian on us. 
<laughs> what, 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 what did he say? He said, we want Italian, you want Italian on us. He went, like, you heard that? You saw that? You saw this for sure? Oh, you saw it? Sure, we, you were hanging out. Maron, Maron. You were gonna, if we get a Maron out you were there, hanging out. You were hanging around with some Italians <laughs> in Vegas out there, bro? No, nah, that's you. You want Italian on us. I'm on Pro Box TV with Pauly Malinaji. That's what that is. Sean, do you think Spar guys sparring sparring is sparring? I know we I know we we know that we say that. Like, listen, we came from an era where you never posted sparring. We we live in a very different era now. Where guys like to talk about sparring, but listen, when you're in camp and you have sparring partners that are coming into your camp, I mean, man, you're not supposed to talk about that stuff. It, it is what it is because, like you said, Sean, you were going through what you were going through. You're a week out from a fight or however. It doesn't even matter if you're in your your camp. It doesn't yeah. matter what happens. That's yeah. you're working on things. I say it all the time about sparring, like. Listen, you might have thought you got over me on sparring. Man, I might, I might have been working on just landing one punch that whole round. And that was that was my job for that session that day. You but, are but, you are a cog in my wheel for what I'm doing. But, so but, guys who want to it, talk about but sparring. But guys, there are some the guys. Funny, the, go ahead, champ. Go ahead. I was going to say, yeah, the funny thing about me is if you, if you scour YouTube and you find fights of mine and you find sparring of mine, I don't think there's one good sparring video of well, me. Well, that's what I was going to say, Sean. I was in wild card when you were there. Your, your sparring, truth be told, yeah, that wasn't was that point. impressive. You were a very yeah. physical guy. And, and, and you know, you, the, the, you, it's harder to break down guys with that style when the gloves are bigger because they can be more brave with you. But when you have mm -hmm. that style and energy and smaller gloves, bro, it's, it becomes a different beast. That, but there are styles which translate better in fights and translate better in the gym. Bro, I was one, I'm telling you, you ask anybody in New York and around the time I was coming up in Glee, I was one of the best in the gym, bro. I was beating everybody's ass <laughs> in my gym, bro. I Coming up the ladder in one of the best gyms in the world. I, you know what I mean? And then, of course, I went up the ladder and at world-class level, I had mixed results, right? But but I'm telling you, man, there, there are guys that have looked better in the gym and less less good in, 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 in the fight, and there are guys that are, are the opposite, bro. And I'm telling you, I personally... Saw so Sean in both, bro. I'm telling you. Like, like <laughs> Sean was not a guy that translated his best in the gym. He was a guy that translated his best in the fight. So you take what, what, what Tank said with a grain of salt. I got two guys, for example, and actually they're in the same weight class, but notoriously, notorious, mm -hmm. notoriously bad in the gym and absolute monsters on fight night. One is Sergey, Sergey Kovalev. Down in South Florida, man, I got so I've I've come across so many sparring partners, so many so many of their coaches talk about yeah, Sergey just sparring, you know, he was getting beat up by guys, this and this and that, and then on Friday, and this is when he was on his tear tear, when he was knocking everybody out, mm. and Sergey was just not the same guy with the bigger gloves on. He was not the same guy when he was in when he was in sparring sessions, getting ready for a fight on fight night. Forget it, no holes barred. The guy got it done. He had to be had it. The other one is is Joe Smith, who I've seen in person. Yes. I've seen Joe Smith struggle. He fought Will Rosinski, who's a fantastic amateur, fantastic amateur in New York. Will Rosinski, very decent pro as well. And I remember watching them spar years before they ended up fighting. That was one of Joe Smith's first big step-up fights was against uh, Will Rosinski. And I was like, and, and Will put it on his ass. He outboxed them. It was just a different level. And when they fought, completely switched. Mm -hmm. Joe the power, the, level the, than, the than power than translates more. Those are both power punches. Small gloves, the power guys. translates more with small gloves. So especially with punchers, they, it, it becomes a whole thing. You can take their their power better when you got a headgear and bigger gloves. You know, they still hit a little harder than other guys in sparring, but you can take it a little better. You can be a little braver. Bro, those little gloves, man, they take they, they take your willingness, they take your 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 pride in, in, in being tough away. You're like, all right, bro, let's just be smart with these <laughs> people, guys. People who you don't know, know like and, just casual fans, they don't know the difference in those gloves and how small they really yep. are. Fight gloves are the eight or ten ounces. Yeah. They are very, and, very and, small. And Chris and Will was not padding at all. And Chris, Will wasn't just a great New York amateur. He was a he won the US championship. What was a, yeah. a, a yeah. solid a national level, a nationally ranked amateur, and, and 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 of course, like you said, it translated in the gym. But in, in the fight, you know, it's, it's power punches are power punches. It, it reminds me a little bit of Richard Pryor on the the comedy show. He's like, I was a beast in the gym. It was yeah. the ring I had yeah. my problem. <laughs> yeah. Richard Pryor I've seen that skit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and he does he does the. Yeah, he does the thing. He yeah, does yeah, all, she, the, all, she the, got all the. We, I mean, listen, we, all, we all know up. those guys too. We yeah. know guys who are absolute monsters in the gym or yeah. look great on that the pads. Work. But then, yeah. you know what I think of those guys. Up. You know what those those guys. It's just, it's sad. But I think of the, the of the movie Troy when uh, uh, the kid goes uh, to Brad Pitt. He goes, "Are you gonna fight him or something like that?" He goes, "I will be scared to fight him." And Troy and and Brad Pitt's character goes, "That's why the world will never know your name." Yeah, exactly. It's, like, it's a shame. <laughs> it's a shame because yeah, and he just waking up. Yeah. <laughs> but and it's a shame because. 
you, we, we've all seen such talented guys that they can't just can't translate in, yeah. in the, under the lights. And so we only know them in the gym and the world will never know their name and doesn't know their name. And we, we can, we, I'm sure we all know them. I know I know a few uh, in the gyms when I was coming up. All right, let's talk, Listen, about, the, let's talk it, about those. It, no, go ahead, Sean, real quick. I was going to say, it, here's the bottom line. You know, for the record, I don't have a, a dog in a race. I want to see good boxing. I want to see great boxing. But, you know, when you've been at the level that myself, Chris, and, and Paulie have been in, not only do we understand in the ring, we understand the business outside of the ring. And I'm sorry that I kept it real and say, yo, at the end of the day, the business is not in, in, advantageous for this fight. And even Sean, this year. And I'll tell you guys. Hurts. And I'll tell Truth you guys, yeah. even off camera, you know, Sean loves both fighters. You know what I mean? Like yeah. he, 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 it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's not personal. It's not a personal hate. You know what I mean? It's just, you got to yeah. make a... Tr when you, we wouldn't have this job if we, could, if we were always on the fence. The, the, the yeah. People that give these jobs, they don't want guys staying on the fence. So you got to make your choices. And we all have them inside our choices, but we don't, a lot of times people don't want to broadcast them outside. You know, what you really think. And even what you really think, it ain't nothing personal. You know, like I, I might be able... I might think fighter A might beat fighter B, but personally, I might actually like fighter B better. You know what I mean? But if I'm doing my job, I got to pick fighter A in the fight, right? It, it's, it's, you know, it's, that's, it's, that, not, it's never personal. That's actually, that's actually more often than not. Yeah. We're, yeah. We're, we're, we, have to, we have to make those decisions internally and what, what we put yeah. out. And what Otherwise, we, put we don't out, have but... these jobs. Right. right. Well, well let me ask, let's ask a question because you guys are talking about the sparring partners and everything. So, Sean, who's the, the best sparring partner you had or someone that you sparred with that eventually became a world champion? Um, I don't know. Um, people, I know people were, have been in the in the gym when I spar with uh with Demetrius Andre and mm. and thought that mm. he was one of the best fighters they've ever seen, and even to the point where they thought that he would he would give Benavidez uh, a run for for his money. Um, outside of that, you know, sparring with sparring with some of the guys that I spar with, um, a lot of those guys haven't really gotten to the level that I've gotten to, but. Um, one that, that really jumps out in my mind is Brandon Adams. I want to say shout out to Brandon mm -hmm. Adams, someone who was held back by just just the paperwork of boxing, um, but 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 uh, just one of the better athletes that I've ever been in the ring with uh, as a professional. So um, this 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 a plethora of guys out there though. Yeah, what about you, Paulie? Anyone that um, stands out that became a world I've, champion? I've, I've, I, I I can remember several, but now like I'm not. Not everybody's coming to mind. One that really sticks out is Tony Harrison. I remember sparring Tony Harrison when mm -hmm. he was 2-0 and, uh, and, and, and being really mm -hmm. impressed with him and, uh, and really, like, giving him some, some good words of advice. Like, I'm thinking, like, you know, don't... Because, you know, sometimes you lose yourself. 2-3-0, yeah. you know, you, you, you're you still kind of going in different directions mentally. And, and, you know, if you don't have a great passion and love for the sport, you, you can be 2-3-0 and then and you can start getting caught up in your own headlines and you're not going anywhere. You know what I mean? I can remember, like, personally talking to him afterwards and be like, oh, you know, you have... Championship potential if you keep doing what you're doing, you know. I think there were certain others, man. I mean, uh, yeah. I, there was so much sparring. None, none of us. Somebody might bring it up to me, and then I'll remember. But I, I mean, there's been. We've probably sparred with thousands of people. Yeah. I mean, literally. Uh, I, I, I sparred a lot coming up. I, I did a lot of sparring with a lot of guys. Um, and I know Chris does because Chris. Every time we mention a guy, yeah, Chris, I was just Chris, about to say Chris and those Chris sparring. Chris sparring. Like, and Sean, Sean box <laughs> longer. Than, Sean box longer than all of us. I can't imagine yeah. how many people Sean. Had. I'm telling you, Sean probably has sparred guys that became world champions too later on, but he probably doesn't yeah. remember them. I, I am yeah. not remembering everybody, but I remember Tony Harrison. Yeah, that's, uh, uh, that's a good point, Paul. Because yeah. I have the, I have the shortest career by boxing career by yeah. far. And mm -hmm. of, of all, all of us. Yeah, but you make up for sparring. Yeah, yeah that we were going to say, we everybody. always tease you by it because yeah. you sparred everybody, it seems yeah. like. <laughs> that was my way to, that was my way to make up ground because I didn't have the amateur background. So I just, I was in gyms constantly. You know what I can remember? And obviously I'm not a fighter, uh, but as a producer, I've been in a lot of gyms and seen a lot of sparring. And I remember, I think Devin Alexander was training for Tim Bradley and he was in Vegas training for the fight. And he had a couple of sparring partners and I met a young fighter and he was in the ring and I said, wow, this guy can, he's got some talent. That young fighter was Adrian Broner before he mm -hmm. had won a title. But Adrian Broner back then, he was so disciplined when he ran with Devin, he was always in front of him. When he sparred with him, he held his own with Devin Alexander and Devin Alexander in his day w w was a really, really good fighter. Oh, so, yeah. you know, you see that in sparring, a lot of sparring sessions and people don't you know, know. They, they think sparring sessions are fights. You guys, as as fighters, you're working on things, but you can see certain sparring partners that that are talented. And Broner, he came, he went on to win a bunch of titles. You know what? And you got it's also that reminds me. I think was Devin already a world champion when he sparred with Broner. Yes. So, yeah. Yep. It reminds me because I thought of something with Sean said because Sean mentioned Bubu Andre and they kind of became champions around the same time, right? You guys were in the same generation, if I'm not mistaken, right, Sean? 
You went yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. Yep. So if I think of guys in my generation, I sparred guys that before they won world titles and before I won world titles, that then we both became world champions. Uh, guys that are sticking out of Vivian Harris and Joan Guzman. Mm. We used to spar uh, in the gym uh, before uh, any of us became world champions. Vivian was and, a bad and, dude, and, man. Yeah, and all three, all, three, all three of us became uh, uh, world champions after the times we were sparring with each other. Yeah, the, Vivian hey. was the first boxing world champion I ever, I ever sparred. Yeah, I have, first, I, have, I, have, I, have, I have hundreds of rounds of Vivian. Are you yeah, Vivian is awesome. So I got, I got two guys. One very well known that everyone at home, and one that only, only probably Paul is going to know. But uh, number one is Der Sergey Dervinchenko. He's, he was a guy that I sparred. Um, obviously, he's much bigger than me, but I, mm. I was always Sergey is a known very good gym fighter. Everybody, I was, I was everybody in New good. York is very high on him. Yes, uh, he, he. I have never been so uncomfortable in a ring with with any any human being uh, than than Sergey. <laughs> Granted, he's a much bigger guy with good but reason. Like, I, could, I could always deal with, especially in sparring with the bigger gloves, like we talked about. Earlier, I could always deal with bigger guys because I could always box, and I was, I'm tall enough. I was, I'm still taller than Sergey. I could box, but man, that guy's angles and how many punches he threw, even though he was bigger than me, that was uh, that that guy. And, he, un, and unfortunately, Sergey never won a world title. As good as he is, and as all the great big fights that he's been in, never won a world title. The other guy. Paulie Martin Wright, remember him? Martin, yeah, he got. He just recently passed away, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Rest in peace, yeah. Martin Wright. He was, um, he, he was sharp, man. He was sharp. Martin Sean, just had, we Martin had just, Martin was just a street kid, though. But yeah, that he, was one of those kids. You know, we were just talking about one. guys that no people aren't gonna know their name. Martin Wright's one of them. Yes, we gotta, we Sean. Got, this this kid, he was tall. He was, long, he was a welterweight. South. He was a southpaw. He had he he must have had eighty inch reach. His arms were crazy <laughs> long. And he was sharp as a he, he didn't make a lot of foot movement. He would just slip and yeah, slide. Pivots. He hit me with a he hit me with a left hand. I saw everyone who was directly behind me. My head spun around <laughs> so hard. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is Pro Box TV, your boxing channel. Thanks for watching us here on YouTube. And don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter at Pro Box TV. And download the Pro Box TV app where apps are available. And for live fights and so much more, visit us at ProBoxTV.com.